Welcome back to another project in the series of bag making tutorials that I have put together for you. This is the second one in line and the reason being we use the same pattern and we learn how to give this rounded bottom and also we're going to tuck this at the top so that it just kind of gives you that slanted look. We're also going to learn how to use this curtain rings and then pass your handle through and the other technique we're going to learn is how to finish the handle with a bias ring. So when you open it and when you're using it, you don't really see any raw edges anywhere at all. Okay, again, this is lined. We're going to learn. I will also show you how to put some patch pockets inside just to step up a notch from the last project. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with another version of Chila. This is just a mark so that we don't have to, we don't make any mistakes later on. Okay, I have cut open the two holes on one side of my denim panel. Now let's take the other one because don't go and mark the same way. Now place the wrong sides together, place them like so, and make sure that you know, these are all matching. And now go and make a pen mark like this. Okay, go ahead and do this, cut the hole and then we go on to the next step. Okay, now we have cut the holes on both the panels. Let's go ahead and place the lining on top. Place a pin. Go ahead and sew three quarters of an inch stitch all the way starting and finishing with a back stitch. We go ahead and do the same thing on both the panels. Okay, we have attached the lining to the main fabric and we've also put a top stitch. Now let's just fold it over and just make sure that we iron it. So then it will be a lot easier when we try to f when we come to the finishing of the bag. Turn it over and let's just iron it from the denim side as well. Okay, let's just go ahead and do on both of them. We have finished ironing the top seams. So let's just put this on the wrong side like so and then go and match your wrong side of the lining and make sure that you match the seams perfectly on the side if you have to go and tack it and pin it do whatever it's very important because that's what's going to give you the killer finish that we're looking for so I'm just going to pin it there and I'm just going to match my seams here and then place a pin. The rest of it is easy. If you think it's difficult for you to sew, you can go ahead and pin it. I don't need to. I'm just going to place a few pins and then we're going to start sewing. Okay. Before we start sewing, remember we made a notch from the center, a little bit away from the center, these two notches. So start from this notch with a back stitch. We go all the way around and come back and finish at the notch with a back stitch. So there's no way to stop. Just go from here all the way and you stop here and we leave this gap. Okay, I've changed my foot to normal foot and I'm just going to go and sew a half an inch stitch starting from the seam, so starting from the notch. When I come to the join, I just make sure that my joints here are matching perfectly. Okay, when we're coming to the when we come to the dart, you just have to make sure the bottom uh, notch will fold to yourself and the top one will fold away from yourself. That way you don't have the bulk of the fabric. Again, we do the opposite. We fold it towards yourself on the top, we fold away at the bottom because they need to match on either side. Again, I just make sure that my folds are matching, my, knee, my joints are matching. Okay. 
then I come back and finish it with a back stitch at the notch. Okay, we have sewn the stitch all around. What we need to do is open the seams. You can put a tailor's ham in through the opening we have and uh, you can open the seams, but the simplest way that I find is just fold the seam in like so and it will start wrinkling as you start folding it in, especially on a curve. But that's okay. We're just going to make some snip marks in a minute and just do like that and then keep going all around. And wherever you see kind of waviness, we just go and snip. So the fabric will kind of sit flat quite easily. And again, just give another quick iron and this time they will all sit flat because you have given the room for them to kind of sit in a curvy bend and you can see they're all sitting flat. Now turn it around and we're going to bend this side exactly the same way and then snip it. Okay, we have sewn all the way around the bag and we need to now iron this bottom opening where we're going to turn the bag over. Okay, so let's just go and iron it because we're going to do a top stitch and close the bag. Now turn the other side over. It's going to be a little bit wrinkly but that's okay. And then press the seams. Let's turn the bag over all the way in. Then push this back in because we need to do some pinning and marking now. So because we have ironed this, this is almost sitting flat now. So let's just go ahead and put some pins on the top. Okay. Now we're going to turn this so that the lining is on the outside, like so. And just go ahead and close the seams. And we're going to put a top stitch on the fold. Hold the fold together and I've changed my foot again so I can sew an edge stitch. Let's just sew. We have just finished sewing the edge stitch. Now what we need to do is try and catch a little bit of the seam on two sides here because when you start using your bag if you pull something out the lining shouldn't come off from the bag. If you remember in the tote bag we had the little corners where we kind of put the lining and the main fabric together. We don't have that in this um, bag so basically just go to the seam and feel the seam allowance of the denim and uh, just pass a couple of stitches just like, you know, a couple of hand stitches. I've put a lighter colour thread so you can see. And uh, pass the needle through the denim. It shouldn't go outside. It only should catch the seam allowance of the denim. And just do a couple of knots like this. And that should be more than enough for the fabric to hold in to the main fabric. Okay, so we go ahead and do exactly the same on the other side of the bag. Okay, so let's just turn this back over, careful with the pins. Now your bag's looking good, so we need to go and uh, insert the curtain rings. So before we can do that, we, need, we are going to place a few more pins underneath these holes, because now we have got a template, we don't have to measure anything at all. Now that we have everything is secured properly, we need to cut out the lining. So let me just go ahead and show you. Just cutting one lining. Okay, so as a male and a female to your curtain ring. So basically the female knot needs to go at the bottom like so. And then just try and fix this all around. You might have to stretch it a little bit and it will fix it like so. And now all you have to do is just go and click and the job is done. 
and that's quite secure and neat. Okay, I have attached all the four eyelets, front and back. So we are going to go and attach the handle, then our bag is almost finished. I mentioned earlier that I have already finished my handle. For this project, because your handles are not attaching at the seam, they need to go in the eyelet like so, and then they need to come out and then attach here. So for that reason, we need to have the handle a little longer than your pattern. So basically I've taken about two inches on the fold, which means it's four inches longer. So anyway, let me show you how to attach the handle. We're going to attach the handle like so, but usually you see a top stitch here and then this side, this is not finished. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Take your bias binding that you have used. If you've used a matching contrast bias binding, then take that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, wrap the binding around, take a tiny bit so we have the seam allowance, and then cut that off. So basically, we have got, if we wrap it around and then sew a stitch here, we've got enough to cover the binding, okay? So like that, we take four of these because we need it, we need two of these for one handle. Okay, so we're going to open the fold and then go back and then sew a half an inch seam on each one of them. So we're going to do that on all the four of them because we have left half an inch seam. If you have left it a little bit longer, then just go ahead and sew whatever seam that you have um, given for this one. Here we have the bias ring. Now, I've, I'm I'm calling this as a bias ring because this is going to eventually make a ring to our handle. So just this is the fold we have just sewn. Fold it in like so. That way we get a neat edge and we're going to do the same on the other side. So that's, that's where the seam allowance is. That's where the seam is that we have just sewn. Now invert the whole thing like this. That makes a ring. If it's tight enough then it's almost like a finger ring. Okay, so now we're going to, before we start passing the handle and sewing, we're going to fold the handle like so, pass it through the ring and just let it sit there. Just, you know, leave it for a few inches away and we're going to do this on both sides of the handle. You will see in a minute why we need this and you will be surprised at the finish that this gives you. So now that we have passed the rings through the handle, let's pass it through the curtain ring and leave about an inch from there because then it's comfortable for you to sew and uh, let's just place a pin. Same way we're going to go this way, take the similar amount and it is important that you measure this because otherwise you will end up having a wonky, it won't be wonky, it will still be straight, but it won't be like, you know, the, your bias ring won't sit at the same position. Mine's about one and a half inches from the edge of the bag. So I'm going to measure one and a half inches here and make sure it's right and then place a pin. Okay. Now what we are going to do is from here, we're going to go and sew a stitch so that stays in place. We're just going to start and finish with the back stitch. Okay, there is the stitch we have just sewn and this way you can still see the raw edges. What we're going to do, we're going to pull this ring on top of this stitch make sure that seam is in the center and now we're going to go and sew a stitch that is a rectangular stitch that will just be sitting on the binding. I have pulled the ring on top of the um, raw edge fabric so I'm just sewing, I have just sewn in the edge stitch here now I'm sewing on the other edge. Okay if you see on the close-up you can't see any raw edge at all and that's all neatly finished. 
Okay, we're almost finished. We've finished the handle and sewing the ring on the top. I've turned the bag inside out. This is entirely optional if you want it, because what we're going to do is I'm just going to give a little bit more shape and at the top. So from the edge, the side seam, I'm going to leave about inch and a half and go and sew a little stitch, straight stitch, starting and finishing with the back stitch, so that it kind of uh, brings in a little bit at the top of the bag. When you sew this stitch, just make sure the edges are matching perfectly, otherwise you're going to have one up and down step. So I'm just aligning it properly and then this is almost in the middle of my eyelet ring that I'm finishing my stitch. Because we tucked in the seams at the side, the bag has got a beautiful shape now and there you have your beautiful handbag is ready. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the project and give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more projects. I shall see you next time.